In this video, we're going to replace the cooling fan in this Dell Inspiron 8200. A lot of these machines are over seven years old now and uh, still very functional. But one of the problems with these machines is the, f the dual fan system will eventually wear out as it has on this machine. And you might hear a, a rattling noise coming from the back of the machine when it warms up. And it may also run hot. So for about six dollars I was able to buy this fan. This is a brand new Sunon replacement fan. That is an original OEM part if I, if I recall. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and install this. So, where do we, what do we do to start? I'll show you. The first thing we've got to do is remove the battery, the CD-ROM drive. And uh, that's about it. We're going to take out these PC card blanks just so they don't get lost. And we're going to remove all the screws for the keyboard and ones that are labeled T with a mini screwdriver set. Okay, once you've removed all the screws from underneath, you can now open the machine up and the first thing you're going to do is remove this top cover. It should just pop right off. You will now have access to remove the keyboard, which uh, also slides right out. Like so. And be careful of, with this ribbon cable. You could easily damage it, which you uh, absolutely don't want to do. And we're going to pull up on the... Unlock the keyboard cable connector with a screwdriver. Just gently pull up on these tabs on the sides. Actually, this one's a little bit different from what I'm used to. It should just pull right out or not. These are very fragile connectors. Um, I've seen I've seen more fragile on other machines, but there we go. Now that you've liberated the keyboard from the machine, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at how the fan's mounted. It looks like we're going to have to pull the motherboard out to remove it. I took a quick look at the service manual for this machine and it did mention having to remove the motherboard which I somehow doubt I think I can do it without removing it so here's the fan and heat sink it looks like the fan is simply screwed in and the electrical yeah okay I see why the electrical connections are underneath the board and I don't believe you can get to them from the top. No, definitely not. So we're going to have to pull the board out, unfortunately. But that's not too bad. It's not like a... Yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult. To remove the motherboard, we're going to have to take off this entire top case, which has already been liberated for the most part. We're going to also remove the display. and optic drive. You can remove the display 
by pulling up on this display cable using the built-in handle, removing the two screws in the back. There's one there and one back there. And very importantly, you have to remove this oops, this cable management holder. The only term I can think of for it. What it does is it, ju it just holds the cable in place so that it doesn't get pinched and the display should just pull right off. Oop, looks like we have... There we go. Damn it. Looks like so. And put the display in a safe place. I put it on a couch cushion. Okay, and uh, now we should be able to pull the whole top case off fairly easily. Now that we've taken the display off, this should be fairly simple to remove. Um, I'm going to take the optical drive out while we're here. Um, it's already been unlocked. It's held in by one screw, which is this one here. And uh, once that screws out, there's a little handle that pulls out like so. And you can just pull the drive out, just like that. And this is, if you're curious, if you want to know how old your laptop is, there is a production date on this drive and all hard drives, but this no longer has the original hard drive. So if that's ever been replaced, you can tell by the optical drive. Uh, this was made in February 2003, so this was likely a mid-2003 model. And uh, it's always good to know. How old your machine is. So now we just have to unclip it. It shouldn't be held in by much more. I think I see a clip here. A little tab. When I'm working on a laptop, and I do this quite often, I'm, I'm not, this isn't my first laptop repair or anything, but it is my first. Uh, the first time I've ever disassembled this particular model Dell. Um, whenever I'm working on a laptop, I like to work on a nice padded surface, or padded, I mean a, a soft surface. It prevents the machine from getting scratched. And when you're working on somebody else's equipment, even though this is my own, you never want to damage or scratch the equipment. So working on a soft surface is always a good idea. So this is a, now this thing is built pretty simply. It's there's nothing really complex about it. I've, I've worked on nightmarish machines. This is nothing like that. Um, but I'll show you the speakers on this. This is where they are and they're fairly good sized for a laptop. And um, this particular piece was made in 11 of 02. So this is definitely a, an older machine but very good shape. I don't see any dust or dirt inside this laptop at all. It's almost completely immaculate. Um, so the next thing we've got to do is remove the entire logic board. This is a multi... This is a, um, a modular logic board. We have the main board on the bottom. We have a board above that which appears to be the drive interface board. And above that, we have a separate board, which I have no idea what that is yet. I'm going to take these screws out and find out. There we go. This is the first time this laptop has been ever disassembled. Um, the original owner, I don't think, ever had this thing serviced. So this board should just pop off. This right here is a um, is an RF shield. Ooh, careful. There we go, single connector. Now this, what is this board called? It doesn't say. But, oh, here we go. This is the NVIDIA graphics board. That's what this is. So this board could be installed into a lower end model and it would give you the um, 
the higher end graphics capabilities, the XGA. And this board here appears to be, I see a, a little mini transformer on it. I can't really tell what it actually serves as, but we'll just set that aside. Now we're down to the bare board, which is only held in by a couple of screws. And we've got to take off this um, control panel board first, which is held in by two screws. I've been working on laptops since about 1998. No, a little earlier than 1997, actually, is when I got my very first laptop. It was an old Zenith. I've been working on computers ever since then. Uh, at the time, I was about I was 13, 14 years old, and uh, that was what got me started in this. Well, then it was a hobby. Now it's more of a profession. But um, I am I am not a greenhorn by any means. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. I've worked on hundreds of laptops, and I have not broken one. Not accidentally. I have deliberately killed some. for fun, but that doesn't happen very often. I, I, more of a preservationist than, than a destroyer. Now this thing here, this is interesting. Um, <clears throat> I am a certified Apple portable technician and desktop technician enables me to do warranty work on apples and I don't do that stuff here I do it where there's where I have better equipment at work and uh, anti-static devices I don't have those at home unfortunately but um, I've been doing that for f about five years uh, I've worked in almost every Apple product ever made and um, while some of my methods may not be orthodox, they work. So, so far I found about three screws, and on some laptops, there'll be a steel or aluminum backplane type uh, or, or structural piece in the back. And what they like to do on some notebooks is they will use that to help hold the board in place. And that's what they've done in this laptop. You'll see these, um, these threaded standoffs. Those have to come off, all of them, because what they do is they actually thread into this piece of steel which is bonded to the frame, or in fact, to the chassis. So we're going to use a large flat blade to remove the docking station um, or docking port screws. This was more common on legacy machines um, not so much anymore. Laptops today don't really have these ports that require the threaded standoffs. So you won't see that a lot these days. And now we've got to find the, uh, the driver to remove the others. I've got one in my toolbox. Okay, I've got a 3 nut driver. I'm going to use that to remove these threaded standoffs. One thing that I've noticed over the years, I mean, again, I've worked on laptops that date back to the early 19, well, mid-1980s, up until uh, the last one I worked, the newest one I've ever worked on, um, PC laptop, was a 19, I'm sorry, 2009 HP. And one thing I've noticed about the way these are built, and this seems to be true for just about every manufacturer is they're coming up with much simpler and cheaper ways of building these things and um, 
that's not always a bad thing. Uh, it makes them easier to service, first of all. Uh, the worst one I've ever had to work on was a 1985 Zenith lunchbox. And that thing was built like a tank. It was a pain in the neck to service. It was almost impossible. And I hope to never have to work on another one again. Uh, okay, let's see. I've got to remove this. video connector here. It has to come out. I loosen that. No, I don't actually. It just comes off. Sometimes they like to hide things. It makes it a little bit difficult to find screws and uh, mount points. I could just look at the service manual that will tell me exactly where they are. <laughs> that would be too easy though, wouldn't it? Uh, one of the hardest machines I've worked on was an IBM ThinkPad. I never did figure out. Now this was a 1995 or 6 model. And I never did figure out how to remove the logic board from its metal tomb. Alright. Looks to me. Oh, here we go. This is what's holding me up. There's a little plastic cover over the, um, I can't think of the term, the, uh, the phone jack and the uh, ethernet jack. Um, there's a little cover over the connector, and I'm going to pop that cover off. And that's why I can't get the board out. You be careful, and you have to look for any hidden catches. I can't find any. Let's try getting it at this angle. Take a better look at this. Okay, it looks like it could be clipped onto the bottom of the board. There we go. Got it. I'm gonna just pull the connector off. Safely, cleanly, and effectively. I'm going to use my little screwdriver to kind of pry it up on one side a little bit. Unlock it. And it did not work. These like to be pulled straight out, but I can't get that angle from here. Not easily. Not in a way that works. Maybe I can pull it. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And that goes in underneath that little shielding piece, like so. Okay. Now I can just pull the whole thing out in one piece. Perfect. And the board should just slide back. easily, like so. I'm kind of caught up there in the shielding a little bit. This piece of shielding has to come off. Use a smaller screwdriver. Unlock it, like so. Done. Okay. Got a cable here that's caught up on some shielding down there. The, uh, the phone jack cable. There we go. And we're almost there. Now the fan connector is holding us up. It looks like I didn't have to pull those um, screws out after all for the connectors because. The framework wants to go with the motherboard, from what I can tell. And we're going to have to let it do that. See, again, every manufacturer is different. 
but we've now liberated the board enough to where I can replace the fans. And there's one more thing caught up here. Oh, looks like we've got the connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. There we go. And there we go. Now we're going to set this aside. I'm going to examine it for damage before I put it back together, just in case there were some hidden cracks that I didn't see when I got the machine. <laughs> and you're going to see down here, I'm going to bring the camera closer, where we have to unplug the fans. Here's the memory. I added a gig of RAM to this just recently. And uh, here are the fan connectors. And unfortunately, you can't get to those any other way. Come on. There we go. So now we have to just pop the fans out. And they're screwed in. It looks like you've got two screws, three screws holding them in place. Unscrew this. Take this out. Get three screws. Just three little screws. You'll see this little air deflector. We've got to take that off and put it on the new fan. Unless the new fan came with that, which I doubt. No. All right, so the assembly is uh, almost probably halfway done. We've got the fans mounted and connected. We've got the daughter board is reinstalled. We've got the interface board reinstalled. And uh, we're ready to slide it all back in. Hopefully the reassembly will be just as easy as the disassembly. I'm going to go ahead and mount my camera. There we go. Yes, contrary to rumor, I do actually own a tripod. I just choose not to use it in half my videos. It just makes life more complicated for me. <laughs> there we go. So now we've got it pretty much back where it belongs. Um, get that in. Make sure those cables are where they belong. Getting any of that way. And the board should just slide right back in without any unevenness or anything like that. We just pop this uh, communications interface port back in place. What's nice about um, a modular notebook like this one is pretty obvious when I show you. Um, unfortunately, a lot of notebooks aren't built this well. And um, you'll find that on this one, the often damaged Ethernet jack and uh, modem connection on the side here it's basically its own unit that can be removed and replaced at any time. It just plugs into the board like so. A lot of notebooks, including my $1,700 MacBook Pro, um, do not have modular Ethernet jacks. By that, I mean if it breaks, you've got to replace the motherboard unless you're very skilled at surface mount soldering and uh, or reflow soldering. Um, so. This is a very nice design. I like to see that on a lot of machines. Um, and the power jack on this one, I believe, is part of the motherboard. So, yeah, there it is. So that's, I mean, those are the second most often damaged ports. Um, on, my, on my day job, I see a lot of these network jacks get damaged. And because I don't have the equipment to replace them or the time, we often have to spend over $700 just to buy a new motherboard. Um, actually, after the exchange price with Apple, it's about $350, but it's still, it's a lot of money to lose for one jack. To fix this one, it might cost about $20, bucks if it were to break. So I'm going to get this all buttoned up, screwed down, and then we'll put it back together and take it for a test drive. Okay, let's see what those new fans sound like.
Nice. What the hell? Are they even working? <laughs> CD ROM drive is kicked in. Well, they're not turned on. That doesn't mean there's something wrong here. Let's uh, run the setup utility. Okay, I think it reset all of my BIOS settings, so I'm going to have to fix that. <laughs> it did. Um, apparently one of the boards I had unplugged contained the clock battery, so um, we're going to have to fix the date and time. Hear that? That's the sound of a good, properly running fan. And what we're going to do, try to play this video here, so that I can get the CPU temperature up. Sounds good. Problem solved. Machine's running perfectly fine. I love it.